10 days after high school, I left for boot camp. And three days before I graduated boot camp, the Twin Towers fell and the whole world changed. shit going down and a couple of our guys had gotten hit and he had blood all down the side of his cameras. I, I thought we were all dead. 50 cal, tracers everywhere. It's like Star Wars times a million. I wasn't ready. None of us were ready. Some days I can handle it, you know. Some days I tell myself that this is the price of freedom. I knew much more than War is like super glue. It sticks with you. The guys who actually do the dirty work, they have to find ways to keep from going nuts. You can always try to prepare, you know, to see like a dead body. But when you actually see it, smell it, feel it, it's a different story. You know, you end up losing someone and it just really hits you like how real this really is. That how cheap life is and it can be taken at any moment. Then I woke up. Just like that. I woke up. And 10 days had gone by, and I was on the East Coast, and my mom was sitting right next to me, holding my hand. And she said, Brett, you, you got hurt really bad. Out of the 15 guys uh, that we had, my brothers, I was one of five that lived. I, I lost almost all my friends. Some guys build a wall around themselves to keep the war out. Then they try to come home and find, what the fuck? That wall keeps the war in, too. And it keeps people you love out. The bad in, the good out. That's the Reader's Digest version of PTSD. You get nightmares, uh, you know, people cry, I cry. I cried a lot, uh, had night terrors. Scared to go to sleep because I used to get mortared all the time. So for me to go to sleep was like a huge anxiety. It was just a rough time, rough times for me. You know, I was into a lot of bad things. I was in a real dark place. I always had a weapon on me, so, you know, you get drunk enough or high enough, those demons, they creep in and, you know, all it takes is a squeeze of, of your finger and, uh, you know, the, the PTSD goes away, you're, you know, you're done. Losing families, losing kids, losing their grip. Like a tribe of lost boys looking for a pathway home. And as luck would have it, they found one. <laughs> oh, God. How do we educate these people? How do we tell them that there's a lot of collateral damage coming home? Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with being at work, being around all, the, all these other people. Substance abuse, and then isolation, and then depression, anger, and getting in trouble with the law. I had a good job, you know, at Bank of America as a, as a manager, and, you know, I ended up losing that. So um, dealing with everything, all the stress, and everything that comes with uh, war, everything that you bring home mentally, uh, was just tough to try to get back into civilian life. Even if you didn't have combat-related stress issues or physical injuries. It would still be tough for anybody, but the fact that you've got these other issues makes it even tougher. This place has given me the confidence to be able to take my care into my own hands, my treatment into my own hands. 
now I'm out of this cloud of shit, so I can focus, you know, and and being here, I've been taught, you know, tools of, you know, like how to ground myself, how to deal with my anger, how to hopefully build my relationship with my wife and my kids. So you don't have to be a victim now. Obviously, guys come in here pissed off. Who wouldn't be pissed off? But as my buddy Michael Pritchard says, after 30 seconds, anger is ego. So anger past 30 seconds is ego, and it'll take your life early. So the idea is to let go. <laughs> Easier said than done. And uh, I lost my left kidney and spleen in the blast. My liver got lacerated, a whole bunch of internal injuries. And uh, the, the VA didn't give me any compensation for that because they said it's not life altering. It's not, uh, I, my life right now is not altered in, in, yeah. in any way by the loss of a left kidney and a spleen. And yet we've talked about how you went in whole. Yeah, it, I, I, out. I went in with it and, and it's like, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't even get a receipt for the day. <laughs> Yeah, they, they just took that shit from me. And me. <laughs> but it's hard to be pissed off when you're laughing. I didn't think I was going to wind up here cracking jokes with these guys, man. I, I'm, I'm thankful for it, though, because it saved my life. These are all my brothers here. They've all experienced similar things as me. Uh, they don't judge me. It's been hard. It's been so hard. But... I, I deserve a good life, and I'm going to have one. So it all boils down to this. These guys are getting ready to come home, all the way home.